So if you're looking for some of the coolest corals on the internet, check out TopShelfAquatics.com, American Reef's latest sponsor. So those of you who have been following my videos since about 2007 know that I love promoting good, honest, small, hardworking kind of companies in this reef keeping industry. And uh, there's not a lot of them out there, but Top Shelf Aquatics fits that bill. I got to know them over the past year and a half, and again, thought these guys are good guys that won't let you fail. And uh, as such, you know, my goal of these videos is basically to help basically promote the hobby and reef keepers to be successful and basically that starts with a good healthy stock good knowledge good information right and again one of the reasons I've got these videos going as well introducing suppliers to the viewers so people like bulk reef supply premium aquatics Tunzi, right? Well, again, Top Shelf Aquatics is the next one on that list. Now, you may or may not have seen their video. I had a couple videos where I stopped off at the store. There were some lessons that they taught us on how basically they run their kind of coral propagation farm. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up this video now. It's available on their YouTube channel, uh, but I'm going to basically bring it up here so you can kind of see a little closer look at some of the brew stock that they use when basically selling their corals on the internet. So let me bring that up for you now.
So as you can see from that video, Titan's a really cool kind of brood stock that uh, Top Shelf uses, and that's only a small segment. Like I said, when you actually go to the farms, which are actually in Orlando, so if you're in the Orlando area, check them out. Um, again, it's Top Shelf Aquatics. Just Google them, and you'll find them there. And uh, and ultimately, uh, you'll you'll get to see kind of what they've got going. It's really impressive, um, you know. And again, with that being said, the idea about these guys is um, they kind of separate themselves from from everybody else, meaning. You know, they've got good advice, good products, and at the end of the day, right, they stand behind what they sell, what they say, and what they do. And to me, that's somebody who we want to help in this hobby because they ultimately will help us succeed. Now, as far as this video that we're spinning up on this show, um, again, we know Mike Paletta is always offering all his knowledge out there in, in this video. Um, again, there's no exception. Basically what he's done is he set up that 500 gallon tank and now that it's been running for a while, things aren't working exactly like he had planned. So he's making some tweaks to kind of the life support systems, the filtration, etc. And in this video, we're gonna talk about those as well as talk about what he's planning in the future. And one of those things, for example, is he's got sections set aside in his large display tank for corals from Top Shelf Aquatics, from like Worldwide Corals, from Jason Fox. And what he's going to do is he's going to put them in that tank and basically going to compare kind of the coloration over time. Because as he states in the video, um, a lot of times he'll get corals that look one way under Sanjay's tank and totally different in his tank, which is really kind of cool. So he's going to, again, basically kind of walk through that experiment over the next 6, 12 months, etc. You know, and speaking of Sanjay, basically he and Mike will be kind of doing the same kind of thing, meaning that with like those top shelf aquatics corals, uh, basically um, they're going to donate some corals to Mike as well as Sanjay. And then they're going to, I don't want to have, say like I have a race, but ultimately kind of do a comparison between the corals in Mike's tank versus Sanjay's tank. Because again, they both have different approaches, and it'll be interesting to see using the exact same coral, you know, kind of the results over six, 12, uh, you know, two years, that kind of thing. So with that being said, that's what's uh, on deck for some of the upcoming videos. And uh, again, if you're looking for one of the best fish foods on the planet, check out American Reef's HPD, and you can find it at AmericanReefHPD.com. Hello, Russ. How you doing? <laughs> not as good as you. Your tanks are banging. So they're getting there. Yeah, they're, yeah, not, yeah. they're works in progress, as my tanks always are. But uh, we're basically a little over three months in. The nano tank is kicking. Yeah. The SPS tank is coming along. The frag tank is packed. As things get bigger, they're starting to get put in. I'm doing a, a lot of what I consider somewhat unique stuff. Uh, I now have two skimmers on this tank. I now have a Tunze skimmer on here as well. And even though it's smaller, it's still drawing off a lot of nasty stuff that the vertex is missing. So it's working at a slightly lower threshold. And you got a huge vertex on there too that's still working good. It's not like it's not working. Yeah, I have, I have a two pump vertex 3000 and mm -hmm. I have the Tunze on there. And because of how much bio load, which obviously mm -hmm. I always pack a tank, and how big the fish are and how much I feed, I felt it was in my best interest to have two really good skimmers on there mm -hmm. rather than one big massive skimmer which if something goes bad or something else is a problem, a pump goes bad, you always have issues. Right, With right. two, I have redundancy. Right, and right. my whole theorem on doing a reef tank is have as much redundancy as you can. It cuts on the likelihood of you having issues and problems down the line. Sure, sure. Okay, so do you have any issues like tuning the skimmers? In other words, any time I had like two skimmers, one would do something that I didn't want to do. So That's what I think uh, the beauty of the Tunzi is. It's self-adjusting. Okay. So if it fills up, it basically shuts itself down so it doesn't overflow. Okay. So I don't get tiny bubbles throughout the room, which we've all had with other <laughs> tanks. And I actually have a shutoff on the vertex. So if the skimmate gets so high in there, it'll also shut it down. 
So in that regard, I don't have to worry about coming home to a mass skimmer overflow. Right. Uh, as we talked about in the last video, I basically have made this room watertight and waterproof. <laughs> but one of the things that I could make watertight or waterproof is if the skimmers overflowed. So for all intents and purposes, I now have those redundant right. and not overflowing. Right. Because I feed a lot. Uh, these tanks are getting fed five times plus a day. Right. Small amounts. So right. there's a lot of waste. The fish are really growing. The corals are actually also really growing. Right. So as a result, I need really good skimming in here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you feeding, Mike? I'm feeding your right. elixir. Is that the elixir of life, HPD. Yes. I'm feeding your elixir because <laughs> everything we eat, which will show upstairs, yep. even fish that are considered very difficult to feed, you'll see them picking out on it. Uh, I also still feed mice, yeah, yeah. and on this tank I feed uh, kaolin and rotifers and cyclops because these are small fish. And I feed them a little bit of your food, but I mainly have right. been feeding this because I also want it to get to the Ganiaporas and to the Aphilias. Right. And by doing that, those have just gone nuts in this tank. Yeah, and we'll have to talk about the kaolin stuff. Like I said, I didn't even know that existence. That's cool. Yeah, there's a, a, the frozen and the dry, yeah. and I use Julian's dry in the morning and then the frozen throughout the day, and it has worked beautifully for three months. I mean, yeah. I've Never had this kind of growth, this kind of coloration, uh, and basically no issues. I mean, part of the magic is this tank gets uh, poured yeah. in from the, the main tank and is skimmed out by this. So obviously you couldn't do this if you just had a little skimmer of its own. But by having it being part of a massive 800 gallon system, ah, it's a, a lot right. easier to run a nano with way too many fish. That's right. Okay, so we'll get back to the food. Let's talk a little bit about, okay, so you basically kind of, I don't want to say overhauled, but you changed your filtration system since last we put the video on. I upgraded things a little bit more. I made the detritus removal system a little better. Uh, when I say detritus removal, I was relying on all the detritus just settling in the bottom of the sump and drawing it out when I did my water change bi-weekly. Right. But I got a little more ambitious and I put in two filter socks one for when I want to feed the corals here, then I blast the water out, mm -hmm. take out a, as much as I can and draw through one sock, or two, I have a second sock and a couple of knobs that I change, and whenever the frag tank gets full of detritus, I kick the skimmers on, or the pumps on there as I showed you, turn off the flow slowly, just have it go through the one system that goes through the sock and it takes all the detritus out that way. Okay, so basically what you did then is you plumbed in two filter socks to use opportunistically when you are cleaning house, so to speak. Right. right? Okay. They, they, they're working all the time, but they're not working as efficiently right. as they need to be as when I want a massive amount of detritus taken off. Right. When I blast flow and take things out, and by the same token, by doing that, I've also not gotten the skimmers to suddenly go nuts. Right. Because right. typically when you blow up a lot of detritus, the skimmers go berserk. By doing it this way and then pulling off the sock, throwing it not throwing it away, but throwing yeah. it into the dirty sock uh, right. bucket right, right. and putting a clean sock on, I'm not getting the overflow there from the skimmers either. Well, I was going to say, I was going to hit on that point, meaning, you know, like we had talked before, I hate maintenance and socks and all that. So from your end of that, what's your approach to kind of reduce all the time? I've made it so all i got to do is lift the nozzle up, pick mm -hmm. the sock up, top, top, let it dry out in the sump, put a new sock in. It takes roughly two minutes to do. Well, and then you what, you have a... a I want to say a box of socks. Or I have a repository of socks. <laughs> There's a good word for you. No, I, I have like 30 socks. Uh -huh. That pretty much lasts me a little bit over a month. Mm -hmm. At the end of a month, I take a pipe, I flip them inside out, I throw them in the washer with bleach, a couple extra rinses, they're good to go. And now do you use the felt socks or do you use the mesh? I like the felt socks because I like to get the fine particulates yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, they last a day and a half, two days takes me a minute, two minutes, so when I'm feeding the fish or just relaxing, I change them out, and it's, it, it has been fairly easy and straightforward. Now, these Balkery Supply socks? Ah, uh, yeah, they're Balkery Supply go. socks. Actually, a lot of the stuff I'm using is Balkery Supply. Uh, the, the, the tank yeah. is being dosed right now with calcium alkalinity and uh, magnesium. Those are all Balkery Supply products. Uh, I got away from the calcium reactor for a while. I yeah. want to test to see how this works versus the calcium reactor. If it's less grief and aggravation, if it's more, how well the corals do. Uh, I, I know I said I wasn't going to test a lot of new things on this no, no, tank. No, but last time we talked, you did say you were not going to do the calcium reactor. Right. And you were going to go, I'll call it manual. So, so, so I'm going with the doser system to see how that works for six or nine months. And then I may go back to the calcium reactor and kick that on, see if I get faster, slower, whatever growth. 
but this way at least I have a baseline. Sure. So from three months, I can see how things are going. Like, I can see in most of the frags I'm getting, within two weeks, I'm getting them to start to encrust down. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a good growth rate. Right. And I'm looking at some of the corals I've fragged in here. Within a week, you can't tell that there was a piece was fragged that's covered over, and within two weeks, it's already starting to butt off of there. Right. I consider that a, a, a good assessment, because uh, uh, looking at a tank is like looking at your kids. You go, I don't think this has grown at all. Wow. Well, your kids are this tall. It's the right. same way. I don't think these corals have grown at all. The next thing, they're growing into each other. Right, right. So right. that's what I'm doing. I haven't started putting the massive frags in here yet because I have been trying to optimize <laughs> the mounting system. Uh -huh. And what I'm going to use is the worldwide coral, quote unquote, the worldwide coral system that uh -huh. uh, Lou and uh, Vic and uh, Chris and uh, Jason and everyone else down there have masterminded. Where you basically take a plug, mm -hmm. put a small amount of super glue on, mm -hmm. a lot less than I normally use, then take a pea sized piece of EPO putty, mm -hmm. mix it up, put it on, then put another piece of super glue on that, then twist the piece onto the rock. And I've done that with like five corals here two weeks ago, uh -huh. and four of the five are still in place. Okay. So that's way better than me mm -hmm. just doing super glue. Right, right. Uh, it's a little more. Uh, labor intensive and sure. a little more thought provoking because you can't take off big huge chunks right. and mix it up because the uh, EPO putty will dry before you use it. Right. So you're going to take off small pieces at a time and do it. Right. But it works because one of the things I'm going to do here, unlike any other tank, I'm going to organize it so that everybody's uh, frags have their right. own little spot. So I can see how they do, how they grow, compare them, how they color up with what we see in the pictures. Right, Everything that you right. want to see, and it should be an interesting way to do it. Because okay, so I've left lots of space in here. So to that point, okay, what are you expecting? I mean, do you think like the mother colonies from maybe worldwide corals are maybe hardier than maybe the mother colonies from Jason Fox, or what's your, you know? I'm, I'm not thinking in terms of hardiness because these okay. have all been captive raised, and these are all second, okay. third, fourth generations of things. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how the coloration of things okay. change. Okay. Because, uh, like in, in the frag tank, uh, I was up at the Darren Novi's a couple weeks ago, and I got a frag of the ASD Millipora, mm -hmm. which is usually orange, green, gold. He had a uh, uh, an alkalinity and some other issues in the tank, right, right. and the tank totally changed colors. It's now lime green with bright orange tips. Oh, right. It doesn't look anything like it. Right. And after two weeks here, it still doesn't look like the one next to it. Right. Now, this is contrary to Sanjay, who bought five different colors of Aquapora Millipora, mm -hmm. put them in his tank, and in five months, they were all the oh, exact same. same color. Right, right, right. Because I, I was just reading, actually, some things that Jamie Craggs is showing with the, the, some of the spawning stuff he's having, right. where he showed some one-month and three-month colonies of Aquapora Millipora. Mm -hmm. They're all green. Mm -hmm. The mother colonies are not green. Right. The mother colonies are all different colors. He basically stated it takes a year for an acropora millipore to show its colors, okay. true color. Okay. So one, I'm going to be interested to see how those go, but two, I'm going to be interested to see how these frags change over time, right. and particularly how they change in this tank, because right. there's different areas of current. Light's pretty much the same everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty much stabilized, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see. Plus, after seeing everybody's corals in a lot of different tanks, how much one coral changes in coloration right. versus another one. Right, right. Because, I mean, I've had a lot of things, like I, we've discussed for years, right. corals I've given Sanjay look completely different than the corals yes. I have here. Yeah, yeah. Even though they're from the same right. mother colony, right, right. my colonies typically look different. Right. So this could be interesting to see that. Because I took out a lot of my old colonies and started with, quote-unquote, named frags for this tank. Mm -hmm. I still have some Aussie Acros in here that I had and that I've picked up that I like. But it's going to be interesting to see how these other new corals do in here. Right. I mean, I would love if Indo opened up again so I could plug some of the new stuff from there in. Because I'm assuming what they're going to ship us is going to be awesome when it does come in. Right. If it does come in. But until then, I hopefully I will have room. <laughs> but waiting is, and patience are not my strong suit. So I don't know whether uh, it'll, there will be space once it does open up. I mean, I'll have to set up a bigger frag thing that will fill this whole tank. But well, I was going to say, see this room back here. <laughs> Now, and then there's another bay in the garage I could fill too, but yeah, like Jason's doing a, a, a big expansion of his production in his garage, and that's going to be interesting to see, as our top shelf, uh, as our uh, worldwide aquaculture is the future, so everything's going to be bigger and more aquaculture, so it's going to see how things go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so back to your tank filtration. 
you, you've added a skimmer, you added a skimmer socks, you took away the, um, I don't know what you want to call it, the moving felt. I, I, I took away the clear filter yeah. just because this tank produced so much waste so quickly, mm -hmm. it just couldn't keep up with it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I have a, a fair number of fish. I mean, for me, I don't have a ton right. of more fish. Uh, there's basically, I think, six more fish than I had in the 300. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot more fish in here, but they're a lot smaller. But for the most part, I have pretty much the same bioload in terms of fish. Uh, probably about the same in terms of corals. So it, it's not that I've added more. It's just they're bigger. They're growing faster. Uh, for whatever reason, the, the fish in this tank seem to be a lot more active and a lot more out in the open yeah, yeah. than they were in the old tank. Probably because the rock works a lot more open and has a lot more places for them to hide. Well, speaking of which, so you got your your rock work that's open. It looks like, in general, from a flow perspective, you can kind of see the, the flow patterns come around the corner and stuff like that. Did you get rid of all the dead spots, or what's up with that? There's still a couple of dead spots. I'm waiting to get a really, really big Tunze powerhead, what I call a water cannon. <laughs> yeah. Basically, to put it on one side, mm -hmm. and once a day for like half an hour, kick it in to blow all the detritus off the bottom and mm -hmm. turn it out there. So, like I said, I'm trying to make this as easy as I can. I don't want it to be a fish blender where the fish get <laughs> right. leave it in all the time. Right. So whenever I'm doing uh, water changes or whenever I'm doing right. something down here and I can turn it on and keep track of it, right. it will be in its own little cage so the fish don't get to it. But that will work to get any dead spots removed from this tank. Well, what are you doing with these? What are these, 62, 55s? Yeah, whatever. I'm going to add two more power heads in the upper corners, mm -hmm. move these two back here, to blow on here because right now there's not a lot of flow coming this way mm -hmm. you can see the flow on the xenia and how much it's moving and you can see the flow on the anemones across the bottom right but this whole upper section here is kind of dead so i want to increase the flow there even though i thought i had enough flow even though the flow is roughly 45 to 50 times the tank's volume right now right, right. it's still not enough right so and once i put the frags in and they start growing they're going to slow the flow down even more Sure. So that's gonna, that's the whole focus of this is adding more current. Got it. So you're adding two of these 6255s and they're going to go up to where your left hand is? Or? They're going to be on the right hand side because okay. I have three MP60s over there. So there's a fair amount of flow already. Uh -huh. These are going to go in these upper corners here to blow across blow this across section. Got it. Because when you look at like uh, this albrahensis, this green albrahensis here, mm -hmm. you don't see the polyps moving at all. Sure. sure. I like to see polyps moving to some degree. And with these tonsies, I can adjust it so they're pulsing and stuff. That's what I want to do in this tank. Got it, got it. Okay, so from a, you know, what you've changed on the tank, um, again, flow-wise, you're adding that. Again, back to, you yeah, added two socks, a skimmer. Did you rework any plumbing anywhere other than those two socks? I've just made it a little bit easier okay. to manipulate stuff. I've put valves on so I can change and okay. adjust things very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, anything I've done to make it easier well, it's is easier. It's a lot more cleaner. It's a lot cleaner down here than it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing I did was I reduced the uh, final fittings coming out of the flow into the frag oh, tank. That's right. yeah. I was, was running one and a half inch. I brought it down to half an inch. And as a result, I get more of a pulsing amount of flow than I did with, with the other one system. Right, right. So in this way I'm getting more flow within the tank uh, rather than just this gentle flow. I'm getting stronger flow. Right. I have nice polyp extension on the corals in there so I'm assuming they're happy with what's going on and that, that tank's getting uh, fed every night something different too. So you don't just let the runoff so to speak from the mother tank feed it. You're feeding it into the I'm, I'm seeing if it makes any difference if I feed every night. Okay. That's, a, that's another six months of experimentation. Got it. Got it. And are you feeding it, again, we'll say fish food, or are you... I'm are you feeding it reefroids, I'm uh -huh. feeding it reef frenzy, I'm feeding it uh, benepets, and I'm feeding it uh, uh, Tulio's uh, reef enhancer yes. from uh, yeah, yeah, from Reef Bright. Yeah. Which so, is still fun, I didn't realize Reef Bright did... Yeah, every, every night they, it gets something different. Right. I know they would like to be to say, well, you should just use one and see if it makes a difference. Right. I want to see if overall it makes a difference. Right. Okay. Then once I see if it overall makes a difference, then I'll try one for three months, the next one for three months. Because by that time I'll, I'll have a pretty good idea. Sure. I mean, right now I'm getting good growth in there, but would I be getting good growth without it? I mean, that would be the other experiment, stop adding anything yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, and so then along that line, okay, as far as the supplementation with the calcium, alkalinity, etc. Um, I'm also supplementing strontium, potassium, iodine, and fuel, and acro power. And now are you testing for strontium, or are you just kind of... Doing I'm that. testing for strontium, but the test kit is like, eh. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. The, the way I, I test for strontium is I look at the tanks, mm -hmm. and if I see coralline algae glowing on the gra gl growing <laughs> on the gra glass rather uh -huh. than growing on the grass, uh -huh. if I see that, then I know I have good strontium levels. Okay. Uh, and, and I, I have it here. I have it on the frag tank. It, it hasn't really grown here because here it's competing more. Right. But in the two little tanks, littler tanks, it's growing really rapidly. Well, in general, though, about like even like the acropower and stuff like that, how are you deciding on the dosage? Are you just... I, I'm following their dosing, okay. but I'm cutting it back by like 25%. Okay. Simply because I because of how much I feed and how much other sure. bionutrients are in the tank. Sure. I'm, I don't have to add it that often. Got it. But it, it's, it's being dosed. Because I'm using dosers, it's being dosed small amounts often. Everything I'm trying to do here is keep things stable, do things often rather than one big bolus dose of anything. Sure. So all the alkalinity, calcium, magnesium are dosing uh, every hour. Mm -hmm. uh, the other supplements are dosing uh, over 12 hours. Got it. But over 12 hours being every 12 hours or? Once an hour for 12 hours. Got it. Got it. Then you would let it rest for 12? And yeah. Then I, I have it going during the day so I can check and see that everything's working. Okay. Rather than I used to have stuff go at night and I never knew if it was working or not. Sure, sure. Now by having it go during the day, if I'm sitting here, I know that at you know three minutes after this should be dosing. At four minutes after this should be dosing. Right, right. So So I noticed, again, you had your CO2 scrubber that you added to it. Right, I added a bulk-roof CO2 scrubber because the pH was running 7.9, 7.95, 8.0 max. Mm -hmm. Since I put that on, I now get up to 8.1, 8.15. Okay. Granted, not a, right. a phenomenally big jump, but in this room, which is kind of closed, if I open the window, I can get the pH up sure. a little bit more by adding fresh air instead of getting the CO2 out of here. But by adding the scrubber, I just want to get a little bit higher pH, also improve the growth. And remember, rate. pH is logarithmic too, so that little point means a lot. It's yeah. not like it doesn't mean anything. No, so going up to 8.1, 8.15 instead of 8.0 is, is actually a lot for right. this system. Right. So I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing with that. And now, um, as far as kind of, again, changes from the other side, now that we're in the middle of winter, right, and we have more, we'll call it evaporation or whatever, Humidity an issue, not an issue? It's an issue. That's why I have a dehumidifier that has a pump on it. Okay. I kick that on typically in the morning when the window has condensation sure. on it. Sure. And by lunchtime, 1 o'clock, it's, it's taken it out. Okay. It, it increases the heat in the room by a degree, a degree and a half. So the water temperature now is 78. Mm -hmm. It'll go up to 79 with this on, or it'll go down to 77. Right. But if I really want to cool it down or, or not have it happen, I just open the window up a hair. Sure, sure. Plus, the other benefit that I didn't really realize, right. but in the dead of winter, actually still now, uh, I get about two to three hours of natural sunlight on this tank. And yeah, even in the little tank. Yeah, it, looks it, like it comes in through the uh, southern exposure window. Uh, in the summer, this won't be the case because the sun will be too high. Mm -hmm. But from October through April or March, uh, I'll wait and see. Because I never knew that before because I had always had that window covered. Right, right. Okay, so humidity-wise, you got that, again, kind of taken care of or managing. The other thing we talked about was kind of all of your auto top off and your, the shower, everything in the shower, so to speak. Yeah. Looks uh, like that had a lot of work done to it. I basically re had to redo the whole bathroom. Uh, the first bathroom was destroyed <laughs> just because of one, laziness, and two, water. Hmm. Just there were too many things that could overflow and eventually got to the walls. So I took out the wall, took out the vanity put waterproof drywall in, seal all along the bottom, put a new vanity in that has a, a nice gooseneck mm -hmm. so I can get under there to clean stuff. So that was one smart thing I did. And then I put everything that could possibly overflow into the shower. Okay. So the 50 gallon reservoir is in there. If it would overflow, it goes into the shower, but it has a shutoff on it. Then there's a 10 gallon reservoir that sits on the bottom. 
and it has an electric eye on it from uh, Marine Depot so that once a day, push a button, it fills it up to 10 gallons. This goes through about three gallons. I don't have to worry about that overflowing. The RODI unit sits above that, so even if that yeah, has a leak, yeah. it leaks into the shower. So to date, knock on wood, <laughs> That's right. There's been no water on on the floor, right. which was my whole goal. But right. now that the whole floor is tiled, the back wall is right. tiled, everything's waterproof, drywall throughout this room. Uh, I'm pretty happy overall because it, it's much drier, it's much tighter, it's much cleaner. Yeah, amen. I mean, like there's the, nothing under the under the stand. Right, right. I mean, other than the garbage can, which is clean. So. Right. right. I mean, it's a much easier tank to maintain. And one of the things I've always suggested is the easier things are to do, the more likely you are to do them. Like with the skimmers, I clean the skimmers now two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. As a result, they're much more efficient when I was only cleaning them once every two weeks or three weeks because it's much easier now. Sure. Well, you know, here's a question on the skimmers. Why did you choose a Tunzi, right? I mean, for me, when I think Tunzi, I always think more pumps, things of that nature. Tunzi skimmers have been around for 50 years. They have to be doing something right. Mm -hmm. I ran one on one of my first tanks, mm -hmm. which was the little brown unit that sat at the top. Mm -hmm. It worked really, really well. Mm -hmm. I had a problem with Tunzi for years because they had planned obsolescence in some of their equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, when that fish place had Tunzi, they then got out of the business mm -hmm. with Tunzi and they sold their external power heads that sat above. Mm -hmm. They normally sold for three or 400 bucks. They sold them for 100 a piece. Mm -hmm. I bought four of them. Yep. They sat in my old 500 gallon tank. They all died within a week of each other. Okay. To me, that's engineering for planned obsolescence. Okay. So I didn't use anything Tunzi for a long time as a result. I was gonna say, dude, scope that out. In other words, what year was that? That's in the... Roughly. Probably early to mid nineties. Right, right. I should say decade. You're an old man. But yeah, I know. <laughs> I am. But that's in the early to mid nineties. Right, right. So I, I held a grudge for a while. Right. But as I've gotten to see their products in use and gotten to try them out, right. they're much more reliable. They tend not to break down. They don't have that. Okay, you got to replace them every three years or whatever now. Right. Uh, and this skimmer I like because it's small. It doesn't take have a big footprint in here. Mm -hmm. It takes out a lot of. I mean. I haven't sent the skimmate out to be tested for what's in it, <laughs> right. but it's taking out the same nasty stuff that the Vertex is, and neither one has shut one another down, right. which to me is an example of they're both working, right. different thresholds, different compounds, because uh, no one has done a study that I know of that says, okay, this takes out this and this takes out sure, that. Sure, sure. So the water in the tanks are clean, the cor corals are open, as you can, when you look at the Goniopores and you look at the right. Euphilias, everybody's happy. The leathers, the uh, SPS are here, the Xenia's pulsing, right. so. Okay. Well, I know to your point, one of the things I always liked about the Tunzi was the fact that by default, two year warranty, right? And then I think on the new stuff, they had like five year on that stream three or whatever. So to me, that that, that was always like, hey, at least they stood behind whatever that is. Yeah, so and this, this tank, in order to, to clean the skimmer, all you basically have to do is lift it up. Yeah. So it's much easier, there's nothing to twist. It's taking right. skim out, real, skim it out really nicely. Right. I mean, the bottom line is it works. Right. I mean, that, that's uh, the acid test of the stuff. I mean, if I like stuff, I use it. If I don't like it, I don't talk about it. I just ignore right. it. Right. Well, how did you know with this? Do you have a little one on the tank upstairs? Is that yeah, I have a little one upstairs that replaced an octopus. The mm -hmm. pump on the octopus, it had been there for two years. Mm -hmm. The pump on the octopus died. I tried to get a replacement pump. They don't make the pumps anymore. Really? You have to buy a whole new skimmer. Well, if I'm going to buy a whole new skimmer, I'm not going to buy one that I know the pump's going to bust on and I can't replace it again. Right. So I got the Tunze, put it on there. It takes on a lot of nasty gunk. Right. It's also easy to clean. It's also designed so that if it fills up, it shuts itself down. Right. So from my point of view, it's a much easier system. It's much cleaner because the octopus from time to time would overflow. Right. Uh, like this past week, whenever the air pressure dropped, when the fronts yeah, changed, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Tunzi went nuts, but it didn't overflow the tank. Okay. In the old days, the octopus would have overflowed the tank. So it's funny, because to your point, with the pressure change, I never realized that as far as how that affects your When you get a really low low, the mm -hmm. skimmers go nuts. <laughs> it's just how it is. I didn't realize it either. One of the things I'm probably gonna put down here is a barometer, mm -hmm. so I can keep track of that. Right, right. Because I mean, it's something you don't really think about, but I've with these. That's one of the beauties of having these skimmers that will shut off when that happens. Right. But both of these have filled up to the top overnight because a, a really strong low came through, right. and all of a sudden, the, <laughs> the, the skimmers work a lot right. more efficiently. You get a really wet skimmate right. then. And you go, what did I do? I didn't right. do anything right. different. Right. 
like, that's just it. Ah, it's so funny because to your point, I've had that happen. I'm like, I don't think I did anything different. No, I, I, I watch the weather and I kind of track it and go, okay, sure. they said a big low is coming. Sure. Uh, it really was a big low because yeah. down here it makes a big difference. Upstairs it's, it doesn't seem to be quite as prominent, yeah. Yeah. but down here these skimmers both went nuts twice now when big lows came through. Okay, that's wild. Um, okay, so back to the tank. Um, uh, as far as uh, anything else added, I think we got everything there, right? What about on the like livestock side of it? Have you added anything? Uh, I added three heniocus, black and white heniocus to this tank. I added a male uh, swallowtail angel who looks like he's converting to a female, which totally ticks me off. <laughs> uh, and a few corals. I really haven't added, and a flame angel. Okay. That's really added here. Here I've added more wrasses, including a, a pair of magma wrasses okay. that are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's a male rhomboidalis. Uh, there's a lineo punctatus flasher wrasse. There's an aldebaransis tank bred uh, pseudochromus, but, which is interesting because he's in there mm -hmm. with a uh, Friedmanni pseudochromus, and the two have gotten along. So that would never happen if they were wild. Right. Uh, I got this nice little starfish i don't know the species but it, <laughs> my wife liked it so we got it yeah, so there it it's, is it's nice and i've added a few goniaporas a few choice goniaporas yeah, as well yeah, yeah, like that. that are uh, really starting to take off what's interesting is there's three bigger sized goniaporas here yeah. they were in the frag tank and they were for the most part dying in the frag yeah. tank they were little and not doing well since i've put them in here they were basically the size of what these little frags look like when uh -huh. I put them in three months ago. Uh -huh. So in three months, I'm hoping these grow into this size. I can't even imagine how big these are going to be. Right. But because this tank's fed, you know, five times a day with cyclops and rotifers and kaolin, they've taken off. So and because the water's clean, because it all gets washed through right. uh, four times an hour. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's basically clean four times an hour. Right. Oh, the other thing I did add was I added a, a carbon filter, a vertex. Uh, Ooh, okay. Reactor full of carbon. Okay. I'm not running GFO, I'm just running carbon. Okay. I change it out once a month. I run it for the first week of the month. Actually, I'm taking it offline tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Runs from the 1st through the 7th. And that's basically just to take out anything I've missed. Okay. And uh, same thing, whatever, Bulk Reef Supply, ROX? Uh, or yeah. the other one, the buy whatever? I'm, us I'm, yeah, I'm using their carbon okay. in there large quantity. There you go. And do you dump it after you have it running? Yeah. Okay. I just take it offline. Everything has a gate and a union. Shut the gate, twist the union, take um, it offline, throw it in the garbage. It's done. Yep, yep, yep. Perfect. So, I, like I said, I've made everything. Like I, I told you about doing a water change. A water change takes 20 to 30 minutes. Depending on how right. meticulous I am, it's cleaning out the sump. Right. But it's easy. Right. Well, now, do you find things settle at the bottom of that sump? Uh, a significant amount of things settle there, and a lot uh -huh. of uh, things actually settle in... The overflow. The overflow. Because I have these glass yeah. liners in here that right. slow the flow, right. I get a lot in the first and uh, fourth chamber. So when I do a water change, it, it comes right out of there real easy. Skim it off there. Yeah. Got it. Got it. I just go with a little scraper and scrape off all the sludge that's on the bottom. Because it, it's usually probably a centimeter to two centimeters thick of sludge. Really? No kidding. Every two weeks. Okay. And I also have a zillion worms that grow in there. Okay. So I scrape those down too because I don't really need a zillion worms. Sure, sure. Now, are you going to do what Sanjay does as far as, you know, how he's got that back growing all kind of wild stuff and spawning? Or? Down the line, probably. Okay. But right now, I'm not really that worried sure. about it. Sure. But down the line, I'll probably put in more anemones and things like that. Because one of the things that we're finding with anemones is there's a lot of chemical warfare between different types. Mm -hmm. So I have six different types upstairs, <laughs> yeah, but I know they kind of fight with each other. Right. So eventually I'll put those down here, light this, and it'll be easy. Right, right. So that's what you did. 
And I know you think I'm going to ask you, what are you planning on doing? <laughs> no, it's what I am doing because I, right? I already have it. So there's there's actually okay. a few things I'm doing. Right. I already told you I'm going to add those those new power heads to increase the flow. Yeah. I'm waiting to get the bigger Tunze water cannon <laughs> to really blast out the detritus. Okay. I'm seriously thinking of setting up a zooplankton farm in the bathroom and growing rotifers and dumping rotifers in the tank daily. Uh, okay, now... Do you are you gonna do like the the nice little systems where they, they take two liter bottles and put some lights over top of it? No. Oh, uh, you're gonna go high. I'm, no, no, no. I'm getting the frozen green water and feeding them the frozen stuff. Oh, okay. I'm okay. not growing green no, water. Oh, perfect. I'm, gr I'm gonna grow the uh, plankton or the zooplankton okay. and the rotifers. Dump those in. What okay. I'd like to do is set up a ten gallon tank, have those sitting inside of it, so I can have the temperature controlled that way. Sure. Keep it at eighty degrees. Grow them in tank water, mm -hmm. dump in three quarters of the thing into the different tanks every night Ooh. or five out of seven days, put it back, fill it with water from the tank that I run through a filter. Right, 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 right. Add the green water, let it grow, next day do the next one. Right. Simple, clean. <laughs> See, that'd be neat, right? Yeah. Because that's real feeding there, right? That, that's, right. that's what I'm looking to do. Right. Uh, if I don't do that, then I have to go find it. I want to do what Jamie Craig's is doing and go to a better means for feeding the corals every day. Mm -hmm. uh, basically he feeds his corals for two hours a day, shuts off the overflow, shuts off the skimmers. What I would do is I can shut the overflow down so there's no water going in here, keep the mm -hmm. pumps on, feed them for a couple hours, then blast it and drain it and clean all the gunk out. Sure. Take the sock offline, do that. Sure. I'm going to do that if I feed the rotifer. But if I feed the rotifers, they will stay in the, in the water because they're the say, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have to worry about that. So. Right. That's the plan. I'm look, talking to Sanjay about that even as we speak. Right. Uh, because he does that for growing his clownfish. That's what I was going to say. So, I mean, you're going to grow clownfish too? No, but I mean, I think if I grow one gallon of, of good uh -huh. rotifers a day, right. that will be more than enough to feed all the corals. One would think, right? Yeah. Holy we'll let them go nuts. The other thing I'm going to add are the uh, air uh, feeders, automatic feeders from Eheim. There's going to be one on both of these tanks and one in the tank upstairs. You mean just the pellet feeders? The pellet feeders. Okay. Okay. Just because I, I feed these tanks now, but I'm mm -hmm. trying to I'm going to try and make it even easier. And if I travel or go anywhere, it's a pain for the people sure. I have maintaining the tanks to feed them three or four times a day because they've all gotten sure. used to it now. So I'm looking to add that on. Uh, I'm looking. What else am I doing? Flow feeder. Uh, oh, I have a Alcatronics alkalinity monitor that I'm going to hook up onto here. I'm also getting a, uh, uh, what the heck's the name of it? They've been coming out for years, but they finally are, are going to be The alkalinity, the auto... No, the, the auto. multiple test kit. Oh, the the uh, yeah, yeah, Mindstream. Yeah, yeah, Mindstream. I have the Mindstream beta test coming. That's going to be on here. I'll be able to compare that with the Alcatronic monitor. I'll also be able to compare that with my testing. That's going to go online. So hey, hold on, what happened about keeping it simple? Now it sounds like... We're no, that, all you do is change the disc out. I don't, I don't have to do oh, the I, testing. Oh, so oh, in theory, oh, yeah, yeah. it will be easier. Okay. And I, I have enough plugs that I can do. I'm not... I haven't gone sure. crazy. Like I said, in the old tank, I was running over 30 plugs. I'm currently running on less than 20. Right, 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 right. Okay, so you got so, lots and of... I have, and I have lots AC. of circuitry now. <laughs> I have, uh, like I said, three 20-amp circuits and two 15-amp circuits just for this right. room. <laughs> And the other th last thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to put the diffusers underneath the uh, radion lights. Because oh, really? I have all the diffusers, I just haven't put them on yet. I don't see much of a problem, uh -huh. but uh, something for comparison. There you go. So does that mean you're going to put them on half, or you're just going to do them all? I'm going to do them all and see okay. if I see something. I mean, right now it's, it's daytime, and right. the tank is, is running with a, a lot more white light than, I, than it runs at night. Right. And the corals aren't really like... Bzzz. Sure, sure. But at night, when you see this tank and you see this tank under the blue lights, I mean, uh, I don't even have to wear the orange glasses right, and super saturate the tank. They're still really colorful. Well, even like now, while we're recording, we can see how that, you know, the diffract tank, or no, the nano tank is popping. Yeah, the nano yeah. tank has really gotten better. Yeah. Like, every day it gets better. Yeah, well, even the big tank. I mean, it, it's still... No, but I've already had to harvest tank. stuff out of here. I've had to take zoanthids out of here. Oh, that's right. I've had to move stuff around. I've had to move the chalices around because these two chalices here, this stupid pink eye one, burned some mm -hmm. of the yellow and green one. So I had to move it and break some of it off. 
fortunately it stabilized really quickly in the right. past it, if i had something burn something it died off right, right because of how good things are going right now right because I mean, it, I, I do a 50 gallon water change on this every other week, which is only 10% of this tank. Mm -hmm. So it's not even, by the end of it, it's probably a full, you know, 10% for everything. Right. But that, that seems to be enough along with a good filtration, carbon filtration, and everything else I'm doing. Right, right. And um, as far as like any other changes that you made, slash that you're going to, um, Lighting only diffusing. You're not adding other lights. No, I'm not adding there. any more lights. This amount of light seems perfect. I haven't. I've lost two corals since I set this tank up. Okay. So and they died early on when I had everything blasting. I was running sure. things at a hundred. They didn't like that. Yeah. Where are you at now from a lighting schedule? Uh, I'm running uh, a variation of Vivids and uh, array of uh, Pirates Cove's okay. systems. But I, I do ramp up for about four hours of, of maximum white, okay. but then bring it down to primarily a lot of blue. Okay. And but I'm still only at about 85%. I'm not running the Sanjay, let's burn them to yeah, the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he's blast, right? He's on. He's on 100%. Yeah. They ramp up 100%, stay at 100%, ramp down. Right. And <laughs> everything grows nice. Everything grows. I mean, he, but he loved metal halides. He'd still be running right. 6,500K of Wasakis. Right. If, you know, they didn't heat the, the house up. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, okay, so as far as what you're going to, et cetera, if you had to, if you had to grade, you know, what you've done so far, meaning you planned it for this, and now it's this, right? Um, happy, not happy. Overall, I'm, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I had some of the frags in the tank already, sure. but I'm taking my time because one of the things for some of the more expensive name corals. Rather than putting the frag in and having an urchin knock it off and me never be able to right. find it again, right, right, right. I'm waiting till it grows big enough so I can refrag it, put the new frag in there, or put the old frag in there and grow the other frag out. So I'm protecting my investment. Right. So right. that has slowed things down a little bit, but th things are growing very nicely in there. Mm -hmm. So in the next week or two, a significant number of the corals I have are ready to be fragged and can be put in here. So that's the next sure. big step. And then I'm going to do that slowly. I, I may add five a day, you know, ten a day max, and see one how well they do, two how well they stay, three if they're stable, and then take my time. There's no rush on this tank. Right. I like past tanks where I had to do this. Right, right, right. I, I now have time, and I'm taking everything much slower than I typically have. Plus, with no new corals coming in from Indonesia, and basically me having everything I want from Australia, right, I can bide my time and wait. Right. Because right. I'm not going to say, okay, right, right. I need to make more space because this real crazy good stuff's coming in. Right. Right. You know, so in, in, in that context, I, I can be patient. Sure, sure. And um, as far as kind of like the time, meaning originally you did this to try to save time, right? Yeah. Where are you at on, on that evolution, so to speak? In the old tank, it was probably taking me between six and eight hours a week to maintain everything. Okay. Currently, this is taking me about two, two and a half hours. Okay. So it's a lot less time, and it's a lot more time spent like feeding the fish and watching the meat. Sure. sure. Uh, making sure everybody's getting food here. Sure. Uh, cleaning off the frags. If I start to get turf algae or something on the plugs, I have time to do that. Mm -hmm. Everything's easy and accessible. I mean, I can walk back and look down, turn off the flow, see everything. Right. Everything's just a flick of a switch or a flick of a button to turn off a pump or a power head. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I've done the water test. If I turn off all the pumps, mm -hmm. the water only flows. I have everything marked on here. So when you lose the power. So I know how high everything gets. Right. Uh, I know how easy it is. I have the same marks for doing the water changes. Everything's easy. Right, right. Well, you know, I guess to that point, you know, the, when you lose power to something and skimmers overflow and all that, have you had any of that happen yet? And did that automatic shutoff kind of work? The better? automatic shutoff works so that not only does it stop the water from overflowing the pump, uh -huh. it stops the pump, the power heads or the pump for the skimmers from coming on until five minutes after the water's power's turned back on. Okay. So by that time, the water in the sump has been brought down to the normal level. Then it kicks on and it's fine. Okay. The Tonze, by being self-limited, also doesn't overflow okay. when, the, when the power shut off and comes back on. Okay. So both of those, like I said, they have both worked perfectly. Right. Knock on wood again. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. For not having water on the floor. Right. And 
I mean, being easy to maintain. And that, sure. was, that was everything I've been looking for. Sure. Also, by making things much more efficient, mm -hmm. the happiest news, my electric bill is $75 a month That's less. That's what I was going to ask, yeah, from a power perspective. It's $75 less a month now than it was before. Okay. Uh, I don't have to cool this room like I did. I had three fans. I had 37 electrical appliances on. Right. I have a little more than 20 on. I'm using a lot more of the natural flow within the system. What I'm using are much more efficient. Right. And all in all, I, I couldn't be happier with... Uh, all the things that have, have changed. And that 75 goes to? More coral. There it is. <laughs> that's one frag. Yeah, that's right. If I'm lucky. If you're lucky, that's right. Not your frag. Yeah, not the frags I get, but. <laughs> Perfect. So it sounds like what we'll do is we'll come back, you know, in another three months or whatever, and by then you'll probably have the frags, you know. Yeah, hopefully, you know, there'll be a, a, a section for Worldwide, mm -hmm. a section for Top Shelf, a section for Vivid, right. section for Jason, section for Unique. And little sections for everybody else, uh, a section for Pirates Cove, right. for everybody I've gotten corals from. So that right. everybody, you can see what everyone's are, and so that I can keep track of what's from who. Right, right, because right. unfortunately, I don't remember the names of, you know, I, I have literally 250 frags, I don't remember 250 names. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Amen. No, and plus yeah. they morph and change into different things. Going, what was that? That was the, no, that doesn't look like that. Yeah. Okay, so we'll come back then and we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, one thing I wanted to ask you, do a plug? No, my friend uh, Kevin Lark yeah. okay. bought Reef Gallery in Zelianople, uh -huh. and he's turning it over. He's trying to make it. We've, we've gone to several stores to get ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to make it a, a lot like the stores you see when you travel about and make it a, a more destination type store rather than going to Petco or PetSmart or any of those right. to get stuff. It's where you're going to go get the premium things. And he, he's collecting a lot of really cool corals to grow out and put in there. Okay. So, and what's it going to be called? It's still Reef Gallery. Okay, so Reef Gallery. Yeah, so between him, Wet Pets, and Aqua World, we have three nice shops in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot coming in for us coral-wise, but they all are getting in more fish and things like that. So, sure. And for everything we need, it's here instead of shopping on the Internet. Which yeah. I, I do shop on the Internet, but I also like... Supporting the local no, fish no, stores. Right, right. Yeah, especially what Bob Fish and Smith is gone, right? Yep. So, and all that stuff. Yep. Good deal, sir. Well, again, we'll come back and see how things go. Yep. And as always, thanks for the time. Thanks. Man. I will be here. <laughs>